Now, this pattern is frequently used with another pattern, which is known as the event sourcing pattern. But they do not have to be used together, but they are frequently uh, used together. Event sourcing is also frequently used in big data scenarios, even if it's not being used with CQRS. In the event sourcing pattern, information is coming into a service, and that information is being added to append only and immutable tables. In other words, there's some table in a database, the information's coming in, and this information's always being appended to the end of the table, and we never delete from the table. The table is immutable once something's, or, or each entry is immutable once it's been added to the table. That's a good way to say it. So let me give an example of this. Here I have an event source table, uh, and let's say it's for Jeffrey's bank account. And we store in this table for Jeffrey's bank account um, the different things that are happening to it. So on this date, April 1st, 2017, at 9 o'clock, uh, zero was added to the bank account. And then there's a memo field here of, I opened a brand new account at the bank. Then on April 16th, my paycheck came in, and I only get paid $100, um, and I added that to the account. And then on April 17th, a day later, I went to a restaurant, and I made a purchase, and that was $52.35, right? And over time, we would just add more and more entries into this table. Now, this is, uh, all these entries are immutable, and they retain an accurate history of exactly what happened. Now, if somebody says, well, but what is the balance in the bank account? You could obviously go to this table, and then you could run an algorithm over all of these entries to figure out what the current balance is. But that can be very time consuming. So a lot of times you'll also have a snapshot view of all accounts. And here I have one row for Jeffrey's account. I might have other rows for other people's accounts. And it has the latest timestamp in here for April 17th, which is the last entry in this table. And every time I make a change here, or add an entry here, I should say, I am going and modifying the amount here. So we could very quickly go and say, Jeffrey's account, as of this date, has this balance in it, and return that information back. So this is the idea of event sourcing. It's this table um, on the left that grows. We keep adding more and more entries into it in this append-only fashion, and each entry is immutable. And if we want to do other calculations on it, you could say that this is our view. So you could also hopefully see how easily this fits in with CQRS, right? These are the commands coming into here, and this is the view that's being updated so that we're ready to return back queries. Now let's look at the cons and pros of this. So one of the cons of an event sourcing model is that the storage is effectively boundless. You're constantly appending to the end of this table. Um, and over time, the table just grows and grows and grows and grows, and it's boundless. The good news about that, though, is that storage is typically very cheap, right? Cloud-based storage is usually one of the cheapest uh, cloud services that you can buy. And so it usually is very inexpensive to store big amounts of data like this, which is why we have these whole big data initiatives happening today. We can store big data efficiently and cost effectively. Um, the other con of this is that replaying that data is time consuming. So as I'm saying, if we wanted to get the balance, we could walk through here, but that's time consuming. But we typically fix this by doing periodic snapshots. So every time we do something here, we update it over here. Or maybe we do every 10 entries that appear here, we then update something over here. So in that case, we could look at a snapshot, and if we wanted to see what's current, we could look at the current snapshot and then maybe only replay the last 10 items to bring it up to date rather than replaying every entry in the table. All right, so those are the, the downsides of this, but one of those downsides has this snapshot thing that you can do to mitigate that sum. On the pro side, when reading from any of these tables, since each row of the table is immutable, there's no locking that has to happen for each of these events. Right? And because there's no thread synchronization or locking, the performance is really good. You can have multiple threads or processes reading from the table all at the same time with great throughput and performance. Another nice thing about this is that write bugs are unlikely and can't corrupt the immutable data. And what I mean by this is 
as the events are coming into your service, you're basically taking them and you're storing them in the table. You're not doing processing on them. And therefore, the code that you write is usually really simple. Take the event, shove it in the table. So it's very unlikely to have any bugs in that code. The bugs, if you're going to have them, or the richer code, is in the scanning the table to do processing and possibly to produce the views over here. So let's say you did have a bug in that code that did the scans or produce the views. Well, in that case, you could throw that code away. You could get rid of this view if you wanted to in its entirety, fix the code to get rid of the bug, and then rerun the code over the tables and reproduce all the views that you need, but now they would be uh, produced correctly because you fixed the bug in your code. So in other words, it's uh, very unlikely that you will corrupt any of the important state, and if you do corrupt any of the less important state, you have this ability to rebuild it all from scratch, and that's very appealing to a lot of people. Another benefit of this, uh, I already mentioned it's easy to rebuild today, but you can also run historical analyses over this. What was Jeff's bank account at the end of 2016? What was Jeff's bank balance at the end of 2015? Which, um, what types of, how many times did Jeff go to a restaurant in, um, you know, July of some month, right? Because you have all this historical data that's append only and immutable, you can do all kinds of analytics on it. Um, as some of those an analysis, you might think about a year from now or two years from now and say, wow, if we had that data, we could now run this report. Well, with this, you could have that data, and then you can run that report. As I say, that's very appealing to a lot of people.